talking about community today, Community Matters. I'm Jay Fidel, and, and uh, Rabbi Itchel Krasnjanski is with me today. We're going to talk about the, the community um, in the Jewish community. Uh, community is so important. Um, I'm still working on that myself. Why is it important? Because it gives us structure. It gives us family. Uh, it gives us connection. Um, you know, because, you know, living in the world, especially today, it's hard. It's unpredictable. It's confusing. There are issues that, that, that get the better of us. But also, as Maimonides says, that man is a social creature yeah. by nature. Yeah. So we always seek out and we uh, uh, attach ourselves to a social uh, setting in a group. That's why the community is very important. Yeah. It defines who we are and it shapes who we are. Yeah, and, and you don't know about your, your, the, the, your peers, if, if you will, in, in the Jewish community, unless you go to temple and connect with them and have face-to-face -face conversations with them and see what they're doing and visit their homes and all that. In my neighborhood, when I grew up in Queens, New York, <laughs> with two temples, one was conservative, which is not quite as orthodox as you are, but the other was uh, reform, which actually I, I didn't prefer that. I preferred the conservative. And um, the community was never so clear as on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, the high holidays. Uh, and I would like to talk to you today about that, Rabbi. I'd like to get a handle on the high holidays um, and Rosh Hashanah. And maybe we could do a, a second show on it, too, because there's so much. It is the most important Jewish holiday. Why? So, as you... Uh... Mentioned it's Rosh Hashanah, which is the Hebrew word for the head of the year, uh, is the high holiday. It, it 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 launches the new year, and it is considered uh, not just another holiday, but the primary holiday. And there's many reasons for that. On Rosh Hashanah, uh, we celebrate the birthday of the world. Uh, according to the Jewish tradition, uh, God created the world in six days. He rested on the seventh, which is the Sabbath. And um, every year when uh, this day comes, we celebrate the world's birthday. And according to Jewish tradition, uh, this upcoming Rosh Hashanah will mark 5,000 780 years of uh, the creation of the world. And we can get into this whole discussion about, you know, do you really believe that, that the world is 5,000? Does Judaism believe that? I was, I think it was um, 5,712 I was by mitzvah. Some, <laughs> something in there, right in there, within a few years. So I have believed it all my life. <laughs> okay, well, uh, so that's a whole other discussion. Perhaps we can talk about how to reconcile the Torah's view with science, things of that nature. But Rosh Hashanah is the birthday of the world. But actually, not quite the birthday of the world. It is the birthday of man. According to the Bible, man was created on the sixth day, on the last day of the six days of creation. And uh, so Rosh Hashanah is commemorated and celebrated on the birthday of man when Adam was created, because man uh, is the, not only the apex of creation and the crown of creation, but also the goal of creation. God, uh, as it says in the Bible, placed uh, Adam in the Garden of Eden uh, to nurture it, and we have been sent to this world to nurture and protect this world and to uh, refine it and elevate it. And only man can lead that charge. So it's almost as if the world, you know, was, yes, was created six days before, but it didn't really kick in until Adam was created. Establishing the relationship of, of mankind, humankind, and the world that God had created. By the way, was Adam Jewish? Actually, no. <laughs> Abraham was the first Jew. <laughs> Very interesting. And what's interesting is that the Rosh Hashanah is not a uniquely Jewish holiday in the sense that it doesn't commemorate a Jewish event, unlike Passover, which Moses led the Jewish people out of Egypt. 
on the holiday of the of uh, um, Shavuos, Pentecost, is God gave the Jewish people the Torah on Mount Sinai. Um, but Rosh Hashanah celebrates uh, this universal uh, occurrence where uh, when man was created. Yeah. Now you can. Uh, we we are going to talk about the four separate uh, Jewish New Years, which um, you know some of them are religious, like Passover is one of them. That's religious, but uh, others are or not, and uh, certainly uh, Rosh Hashanah, the one coming up, what, in a, in a, in a few weeks? The end of weeks. September. Yeah. End, of, end of September, yeah. Yeah, 29th um, and That's, as you say, that's a kind of agnostic holiday. It's not necessarily religious, but it is very important because it's, it's the beginning. It's the, the, right. the right. beginning. The only thing I would say is that it's actually a very, very religious holiday because uh, Judaism doesn't just concern itself with uh, Bible study or the Jewish people. Judaism concerns itself with uh, man's purpose uh, in this world, man's place in this world, and uh, all of that is connected to Rosh Hashanah. And that's mm. why we find something very, very interesting. Mm. In the Jewish tradition, um, you know, like if you contrast Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the Jewish New Year, to how, you know, December 31st is celebrated in the secular world, you know, where they drop the ball on Times Square and everyone is cheering and, and partying and having fun. Rosh Hashanah is actually a very serious, serious time. And the reason for that is because in the Jewish tradition, it is on Rosh Hashanah that every single person is judged, the day of judgment. Our belief is that uh, not only that God created the world, but he actually uh, guides the world and is engaged with this world and, and taught us right from wrong, and everything we do matters. And it's all on the record. Not only, yes, it's all on the record, but it is also all very important. And the person can think to themselves, I'm just one little teeny person, barely a speck you know, in the cosmic scheme. So does it really matter what I do and how I live my life and the actions I do or don't do? So Judaism teaches us, that, yes, it, it matters. And that is actually the foundation of the year. It's the day of judgment. That's the other name. I can't, I yes. can't remember it in Hebrew. Yom Hadin, the day of judgment. Day of judgment. Yeah. So um, there are four... Rosh Hashanah is around the, the cycle. Yes. Um, I think all of them have at least something to do directly or indirectly with agriculture, with the harvest and the seasons and the planting and all that. Well, Tu B'Shvat, the, the 15th day of the Hebrew month of Shvat. Okay, Tu B'Shvat is one of them. Yeah, Tu B'Shvat is one of them. And Tu B'Shvat uh, is like the Jewish Arbor Day. It is the day when... Um, it's the uh, new year for trees, meaning that they blossom. The planting. The planting, not only the planting of the trees, but, you know, they, they begin to, uh, to flower, flower yeah. on this day. And the reason why we celebrate, we mean people celebrate Tuba Shvat, uh, is because in the Bible, in the Torah, uh, there's a reference that man is like a tree. There is a relationship and a very uh, a lot of similarities between mm. man and a tree. Mm. Mm. So therefore, what happens in the world of trees uh, is something of note to man. And just in short, I, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but a tree, in order for it to grow, has to have roots, and it has to be connected to its roots. A tree uh, has branches that produce fruit. And in this way, man is similar to that, and that is that we have to recognize that we have roots. and We have to stay connected to our roots in order to nourish ourselves. Mm. And our purpose is not just to be, but to bear fruit. And that has many, many... To be fruitful. To be fruitful. And multiply. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's, so that's two. We have Rosh Hashanah in September, 
You have uh, yeah. Tu The other ones is uh, related. Pesach is one. Yes, right. Pesach, Passover is the Rosh Hashanah for the Jewish holidays. It's the first of the three biblical Jewish holidays, Passover, uh, Pentecost, and uh, Feast of Tabernacle, the Sukkot. Uh, and then the other one it relates to um, the years of the kings. That is a certain, the beginning, the month of Nisan, which is the month of Passover, is also when the, the year for counting kings, you know, their, how, how many years they reigned, Jewish kings. But getting back to Rosh Hashanah, uh, so Rosh Hashanah, interestingly enough, uh, doesn't just come upon us, but um, the, the month before Rosh Hashanah, which is the month that's going to begin this Saturday, it's called Elul. Elul. That's Elul. Elul. That's and, the, and Rosh Hashanah itself is in Tishrei. Exactly. The first day of Tishrei. Right. Yeah. Elul is the 11th Jewish month, like December is in the secular calendar. And the month of Elul is referred to as the month of stock. We take stock of ourselves, of our lives, how we live the year gone by. In other words, it's a time of, for introspection, and a person should, um, we're taught, to use this time to look back and see how, in fact, did our year go, and uh, if, if, if there's uh, things that need to be strengthened or fixed or corrected, this is the time to do it, mm -hmm. as well as to not only looking back, but also looking forward, prepare ourselves uh, for the new year. Mm -hmm. uh, because in Jewish uh, teachings, um, what's interesting in Judaism is that uh, we believe that everything comes from God. Literally everything, except one thing. That is um, who you are and the person you choose to be. That's not God's doing. That's our that's, that's self determination. That's self determination, right? So on this time, at this time of the year, we take time out, just like uh, in a you know in a business, you know, before the tax season, you, you you sit down with your accountant and you figure everything out and you straighten out all the books and you uh, strategize for the year ahead. In the same way as in reference to life, this is the time when we uh, reflect on these matters. And I see a continuum there. So, Elu, you take stock. Right. Um, in uh, Tishrei, um, you judge. You, you judge. Uh, maybe God judges God, too. God judges. But there's a judgment time. Right. Also, and in terms of evaluation, you're right. We that, judge ourselves. And you, you decide, or maybe you and God decide. Based on the evaluation you made the month before, you know, whether you have been a good person. Um, and then, uh, right after Rosh Hashanah, I guess that would fall in October this year, you have Yom Kippur, right. the Day of Atonement, right. where you recognize after evaluating yourself and judging yourself that some things you need to atone for, right. they, they were not good things. Right. Um, so all three are connected that way, yes, aren't they? Yes, yes, very, uh, very well said. And, um, and yeah, this is in fact uh, the case, as it's explained, um, that actually the month of Tishrei, that's the month of all these Jewish holidays, uh, it's not just Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, but Rosh Hashanah marks the beginning of what is referred to as the 10 days of repentance. When what I just, what we just discussed about Elul, time of reflection and introspection, that's, that's intensified uh, between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. In case you didn't, in case you missed it the first time, <laughs> it's time to bear down the second time. <laughs> Correct. And uh, on Yom Kippur is a day of atonement. We believe, see, the, Jew, the Jewish tradition teaches us. That's something very interesting. Like many other things, once you study the matter, you find out that uh, the, uh, the assumption that people have is not only not correct, but it's just the opposite of what it truly is. In Judaism, we believe that even if uh, a person makes mistakes or a person sins, 
And there is what is repentance. You can re have remorse for uh, the things that one has done and uh, a, a strong resolution that in the future, uh, you know, you would uh, change your ways. And when a person is genuinely feels this remorse and makes this resolution, then we believe that God forgives us for our sins mm -hmm. and he wipes our slate clean. Mm -hmm. So this idea of Jewish guilt, of always feeling guilty of, <laughs> right. of, of, of what we've done or could have done or should have done or whatever, that's not a Jewish thing, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> So Yom Kippur is that Day of Atonement, and um, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are like very solemn days, serious, serious days. But then, right after Yom Kippur, we enter into the holiday of Sukkot, east of the Tabernacle, which is a very joyous time. And, Fall harvest. Yes, yes, a very joyous time. And the idea, spiritually speaking, is that. Uh, once we go through this cleansing, so to speak, on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, then we are able to fully express our happiness. And, and we can feel good. Right. Yeah, yeah. We're going through that cycle. So, you know, when I was a kid, <clears throat> there was, I mean, we had a pretty active Jewish center. Uh, I remember it well. Uh, uh, when I was a kid, uh, the high holidays, everybody showed up. I mean, there was not a seat to spare. People were squeezed in the pews. They were hanging around outside. It was a whole day thing. It was a two-day thing, right. first day, second day. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was a very impressive gathering of people because they didn't come so much the rest of the year, but in those days, they came. So query, why, was, why, why does that happen? Does it happen all over the world that way or just in New York? And secondly, why two days, Rabbi? You need two days for this? Uh, is well, that sort of to accentuate it or what? Well, two good questions. You're right that Rosh Hashanah uh, uh, strikes a chord amongst many, many Jews, even those Jews that throughout the year you don't find in synagogue and they don't necessarily observe all, you know, all the Jewish ways and customs. But Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, um, most, many, many, many Jews show up. Uh, it's sometimes it's, it's, it's subconscious, you know, you want to connect. Not guilt, not so much, <laughs> I don't think today it's okay. guilty. But it's more because the day is a very holy day. And, um, you know, like I say, we, um, you know, we, we orient ourselves on this day for the entire year. The reason why it's two days is that's the difference between the Jewish uh, customs in the diaspora and in Israel. Mm. In Israel, all the holidays are one day. Mm. In the diaspora, there are two days. Mm. And the reason for that is, technically, is because the Jewish calendar is a lunar-based calendar, meaning when the, when the, when the moon reemerges, that's the new month. So in the times of the temple, uh, there, were, there was the rabbinical court in Jerusalem, and the witnesses would come and they would say, we saw a sighting of the moon, so that today is the first day of the new month. And that was very important to, uh, to determine which day was the first month, because, for example, Passover is on the Torah says it should be on the 15th of the month of Nisan. We need to know when the first day is. Is it today or tomorrow? So the people in Israel were notified right away once the witnesses came. The people who were living far away, um, they could not be notified. So they would practice two days just in case. Oh, the that's very practical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, today, the calendar has been figured out, you know, based on the astrology. They know exactly when the moon will reemerge for, you know, our calendar is based on uh, Rabbi Gamaliel, one of the sages in the Talmud, who he figured out the calendar for forever, for thousands of years. Uh, but, you know, because it's tradition, so we still keep two days. So uh, Chabad is part of the diaspora. Yes, we, you know, we, anyone who lives outside days. of Israel. Yeah. Anyone who lives outside of Israel. Everyone. Yeah. 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 
So, um, you know, I, I recall there was a, a lot of uh, uh, eating. Uh, there were there were me meals. Yes. Uh, there yeah. were prayers all day, right. and then meals. Right. Uh, as opposed to Yom Kippur, the where fasting. you were fasted all day. Right. So, and I remember too. You have to tell me more, but uh, there was a, something about a, an apple dipped in honey. Correct. To be sweet. What, what about the foods and right. what happens at home and what do people do with their time on these two holidays? So, um, again, very good question. Um, even though that Rosh Hashanah is a, is a serious time, but it's also a very happy time. And that's just the Jewish way. That's what the Torah teaches us, always to be happy, always to celebrate. And, uh, and happiness is a very serious thing. So it, <laughs> <laughs> This is going to be on the final exam. Happiness is a very serious thing. <laughs> <laughs> very serious matter. And, um, you know, um, they, they, you know we, said, we, we mentioned earlier, Rosh Hashanah is a day of judgment. Right? That's when we work on ourselves to better ourselves. But it's also, as we say in the prayers of Rosh Hashanah, that we all pass by God and his, his throne, and we're judged whether to live or to perish. Or, you know, everything about the future year is determined by God. However, when the judge also happens to be your father, and he's a loving father, so we actually are not that, that uh, worried because we're confident that God, our Father in heaven, uh, probably sees us in a better light than we see ourselves. He sees our goodness and our potential. He's kinder than He's we kinder are. He's kinder than we are. Talk to ourselves. Yes. So. That's why Rosh Hashanah is also a day of celebration. And the tradition is that we eat different kinds of foods because uh, we want to... Uh, um, we want to uh, call attention to the uh, different themes of the, of the day of the holiday. So, for example, dipping the apple into honey is, and we say a prayer that may God renew this year for us to be a sweet year. And the idea of uh, idea of the sweet year, as we all know, we all want to have a sweet life. Uh, you know, uh, as someone once explained, God forbid someone is sick. And he needs to have medicine. An apple a day. <laughs> right. and, and he needs to have medicine. You, God forbid it's not cancer. You take chemo, which is, give, is administered to you to save your life. Uh, so it's good, but it's not sweet. It's, very, it's a bitter pill. Sometimes in life, you know, we, we, you know, we need to take a bitter pill. So we ask on Rosh Hashanah that not only it should be a good year, but it should be a sweet year. You know, the good should not come to us through any bitterness but sweetness. You know, one of the things that, that strikes me from this is um, this process of evaluating yourself, uh, this process of uh, finding where you may have failed and, and atoning and seeking forgiveness and all that. <clears throat> it, uh, my recollection, but, but remember I was only in one little family and, and it was going nuclear all the while, you know, spreading to the four corners of the planet. Um, is that it was personal, that your, your evaluation was between you and God, uh, your, your atonement was between you and God. Um, but is this theoretically more than that? Is this where I come to my father, my, my actual father, uh, or my mother, and I say, you know, I, I'm evaluating myself, uh, you know, this past year, I, I did some things that were wrong, you know, like, uh, like a confession almost. Um, you know, what do you think? You know, give me support, give me a reaction. Is it a family uh, catharsis or is it just me? Well, first of all, uh, a person is not an island unto themselves. We all uh, are uh, in different relationships. Uh, some of them are deeper than others. Now, what's interesting is that the Talmud says, Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, forgiveness, uh, God forgives an all sins as they relate between you and God. You had a moral lap. But the thing, but if you sin by hurting someone else, and it's not enough to uh, repent 
to God, you need to actually go and ask forgiveness from the people that you've hurt. Uh, and only then are you atoned for your sins. You mean you, you pay a visit? Yes. You actually speak to a person who you may yeah. have sinned against? Yeah, 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 yeah. So or you may have hurt whatever. So that's the Jewish custom. We ask forgiveness. From, they don't necessarily, that's not limited to Jews no. against whom you've sinned, but no. anyone against right. whom you've right. sinned. Exactly. So is it appropriate then for me to call somebody and yes. say, really, I'm sorry for what I yes. did. Yes. I recognize I yes. was wrong. Yes. I want to cleanse myself yes. at the end of the year. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. How interesting. And that would give you catharsis. Yes. And, you know, it's very interesting in the Jewish law, it's brought down that what happens if the person you offended or the person you hurt is no longer alive? How do you uh, correct that? So it says that you go with a quorum to their grave or where the person is buried and you ask forgiveness. That's brought down in oh, the Jewish Oh, is that right? Story. You go to the cemetery? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I'll give you a hypothetical. Suppose I'm, um, like, suppose I pray every day. And I do everything right. I always follow the rules, and I am always kind and nice to everyone. You're perfect, in other words. I'm perfect. <laughs> Let's yeah. assume that yeah, yeah. for this discussion. Yeah. But is this hol holiday still relevant to me? Is this uh, <laughs> cathartic experience still relevant to me? Maybe it's a relative, a relative thing. My, my transgression so, would so, be so, much so, smaller than somebody else's. So, but... so let me tell you that there was a, a Hasidic Rebbe that once said, God prefers the sinners who acknowledge that they sinned and the righteous people who think they're all righteous. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> Nobody's right, I, mean, perfect. I, like to, I like to come back and do more of this. Yeah, uh, we have I mean, to we talk about the show for blowing. The chauffeur blowing, right? Uh, you know, I I'm looked it up, and the chauffeur blowing has certain notes, yes, certain pitch, certain words that right. go along with yes. it, and, yes. and uh, we should talk about yes. that next time. We yeah. should talk about how you how you get from Rosh Hashanah uh, to Yom Kippur, and what the exact connection is, and uh, and and the very mm, demanding requirements of Yom Kippur. It's different. Yeah. So, okay, a couple okay. Of weeks. Yes, uh, sure. Thank pleasure you. as always. A pleasure. Thank you, Rabbi. Yes, thank you. Bye. Shalom.